In this video, I'm going to show you how you can rekey a lock cylinder. And in this image here, this will just show roughly how everything works. When you slide your key in, now remember the top of the key, this part, all right, this part would go like this in that direction. Once the proper key is inserted, you'll see there's springs pushing down pins, all the yellow pins, and each one of the red pins are what make contact with the key. So when you push the key in, the, the idea is to have the red and the yellow line come together exactly where the cylinder rotates, which is called a shear line. So the red would be pushed up to there, this red would go up a little more, this one would go up all the way to there. Once all the reds fall on this line, then the cylinder will rotate. If you'd like to rekey a lock, all that is required to make the old key no longer work is for you to change just one of these pins. In this case, I'm going to use a longer pin because with, by using a longer pin, all I would have to do is cut one of the grooves deeper. Once one of these is made deeper, the old key will no longer work and only this key will work. And all this could be done very simply with a Dremel. I'm going to demonstrate right now. Alright, I'm going to use this heavy duty um, master lock. This is the key for the lock. I already opened the lock. This has a locking ball in it. Now you could use this on any lock. A deadbolt in your house, it's all the same. Just slight variation, which I'll explain in a minute. Now, once you open this particular lock, inside there is a screw, which is right here. You unscrew that. I could take the pin out. This is the other side where the screw is screwed into. Just take the key out. Off. And then once that's out, I just grab the whole cylinder, it's out. Now some lock cylinders, this top edge here, all right, in here there's the springs pushing down, like an image over here, on a set of pins. All right, so you have springs pushing pins, and you're also pushing on the lower pins, which engage the key to create the shear line, which allows the lock to rotate like it is right now. Now some of them you could pop off this, it'll be like a chrome or a stainless little cap you could pry off and then all the springs are going to come out and you're going to have five holes with these yellow pins coming out. Now all the yellow pins are the same and the springs are the same. So you can just push them to the side. In this case I'm going to rotate this one and slide it out. Then it's rotated partially. All right, so now all the pins that engage the key are going to come out with the key, and then what you're going to have happen is the springs are going to pop out along with each one of the yellow tumblers at the top. All right, so once the key is in, you're going to rotate the key slightly to get it away from the shear line there, to get it away from the other pins, and then you push with your thumb and hold the top and it should slide out like that. All right. Now you can see. All right. This particular pin right here. And I could actually pick this lock. This pin right here. That tumbler. That's a pick resistant one. It's shaped like a barbell. And the purpose is when you start to pick the lock. Is that the barbell shape gets hung up not allowing you to pick the lock properly. So I'll put that one there. All right, so you can see a whole bunch of springs popped out. And in this case, this lock uses all of these pick resistant 
tumblers, as you can see. These are all the pick resistant tumblers or pins, all right? And these are the springs that go with it. Push this down here. All right, you can see how it works now. There's all your pins lined up. Now I slide the key out. They're all down now. So when you push the key in, they all line up flush, allowing the cylinder to turn. So now what I'm going to do is, I have a whole bunch of pins right here, tons of them, from old locks. So when you have an old deadbolt, don't throw them away. You're going to want to cannibalize them and get these tumblers like this, and they're all different sizes. To change this key so it no longer works, what I'm going to do, and you see there's an actual, there's actually a hole. For a sixth pin, but it doesn't use it, so we'll just keep it at five. Right there I'm pointing. Alright. That's one pin. That's another pin. That grooves another pin, another pin, another pin. I'm going to take this pin right here and I'm going to bring it deeper. Alright, so this is the cylinder. Alright, what I intend on doing now to make this key no longer work is the last pin, which is, you see the point go up and there's that little indent, that's the last pin. I'm going to make that a longer pin. So to do that, slide this back in. You see they're all lined up perfectly. Hold your thumb over the four. Shake that one out. And there is the, the one that was in there. It's very small. That is going to be replaced with that long one, which just so happens to have a pick-resistant ring cut in the tumbler. So I'll take that out. I'm going to place that back into the cylinder. Make sure there's a, there's a rounded end, a beveled. That goes towards the key. And the flat top goes towards the springs with the pins. OK. So there, you can see right now the key's all the way in. When the wrong key is in, this pin is going to stick up. This lock will never turn. So that's why you only have to change one, one pin, but it's too tall. Now the way to do that, you take the Dremel. So let them all go back in. I'm going to get my Dremel, or a knockoff Dremel, and I'm going to use a cutoff wheel like this, and I'm going to make a cut, a deeper cut into the last pin to match the same type of a cut that you see right here. Once that cut is made, I'll verify that the depth is set properly, and I'll go over it with a wire brush, and it's done. It's that easy. So I'm going to cut the key right now. Okay, so let me turn on the Dremel here. I'm going to get this key. All right. Put a good angle on it. You need a good angle, otherwise it will not enter the lock properly and get jammed. Put a nice slant on it.
Now before I finish this key off, I'm going to try it first, make sure the depth is right. Alright. As you can see, it's lower, but it's still not, and the key goes in that easy. Alright. It's still got a little more to go. So I'm going so to use the cutoff wheel a little more to get it to drop in lower. Alright, so let me adjust the end of the key the way I need it. Let's get more of an angle. That's too pointy still. Go out like this. Right there, that's the angle that I want. Okay. Get it this side. Make sure both look the same. Let's try it again. Push it in slowly. Okay. Almost a little more. It's almost in. And the key goes in and out easy. It doesn't jam up because I got the right angle on it. A little deeper now. All right, so what I'm going to do now is make it just a little wider. Right here. That should bring the pin lower. Let me round off that edge a little bit. That looks pretty damn good. Okay. That key looks pretty good right there. Let's try it again. Okay. There you go. Perfectly flush. Now remember, it has to be perfectly flush. You do not want to have it in slightly or out slightly because it, it will hang up. So that's the key in. And I'm pushing on it. Just push on it like this. Push on it. Make sure it's flat. And there it goes. It goes perfectly flush. That's it. Now the way to see if it's a good fit just slide it in freely there all right now if this was still sticking out too much when you go to slide it back into the cylinder like that it would be very tight and you don't want it tight you want it to go in fairly freely like that so that's ready to go now I can put the lock back together this has been rekeyed all right this is the new key And that's the old key. So you can see the difference between the two right there. Different cut on that one. So now all I'm going to do, all right, just hold for one second because what I'm going to do now is it's a good idea when you're finished just to hold this over a wire wheel to smooth out any of those rough brass edges so it slides in and out really easy. 
I'm gonna run that over a wire wheel and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I ran this over the wire wheel. And the key is all ready to go. It's nice and smooth. There's no rough edges from the Dremel. You always want to run it over a wire wheel. All right, let's give it another shot. There it is. All right. They're all fine. Perfect. Now, putting it back could be a pain in the ass. So, let's see. Now, you're going to want to use tweezers. And make sure you have it the right side. On this one, this is flat, and this edge stuck out. So, this is the rear, and that's the front. This will slide in. When you slide it back in, what you want to do is you want to slide it back in so that the pins are away from where all the springs and other pins are. So go like that direction when you slide in. Keep it, because if you do it this way, it's going to be all getting hung up and trying to grab on the springs and the pins. All right, so you could put that springs back in one at a time into the five holes. Let's do two at a time, make it easy. All right. Let's do three, do three of them. All right, so now I'm gonna reach in there. I got a big lizard coming right now looking for food. Right here, which is not good. Go away. Yep. Leave him alone. All right, so now, these are the, right here, these little barbells. You're gonna drop them in one at a time. Look at this, is this ridiculous? Get out of here, go away. All right, now the easy way to do this They're very small, so use tweezers and all right, so you can see they're in, but they're flopped. Now the way to do it, you have to slide this cylinder with the key in this side, all right? But to do it, you're going to push down, reach in with the screwdriver, push down on the pin, and while you have the pin held down, you're going to carefully slide the cylinder in. I'm going to do one and get it going. Now this particular type is a much more difficult type to replace the pins because the end right here, that, go away, get out of here, right? Because the end doesn't open like on deadbolts. On a deadbolt, you can slide this back in, all right, slide it back in, and then this end right here would pop off and then you could put all the, the five pins back in put the five springs back in and snap it and you're done. But with this type you have to do it one by one and carefully slide the cylinder in. Alright so I already have two springs back in and I have two of the pick resistant tumblers back in which are right here. And then I, as I'm going I just carefully slide the cylinder into the housing. Okay, so far I now have four put back in. Here's the last spring. Hard to see, unfortunately, but you push that. You let the spring fall in. Take the tumbler, drop it there. Lift it up, 
Now you're going to push it down while you're sliding the lock in. That's it, it's in. It's all done. Okay. It's locked. This is the new key. Alright. This is the old key right here now. Nothing. Alright. Works perfect. It does not open it. It does not unlock the lock any longer. Slide that out. The new one I, I cut. Perfect. Couldn't be any easier. Remember, like I said, you're not going to have that problem pushing each pin down because a lot of the locks, especially deadbolts, this whole top piece snaps off, allowing easy access for for the five springs and the five pins that push onto the other five pin tumblers that touch the key. Once the key is cut properly and the pins are all flat, you'll slide it all the way in and then leave it in there. You'll put the, the five pins in the five holes. You'll put the five springs after the five pins and then you'll snap the cap back on and you're good to go. Some of them have a retaining clip or retaining ring that holds the cylinder from coming out. So you may have to release the retaining ring to change the pin and cut the key. I'm now going to replace the lock. I'm putting it All right now I'm going to replace the cylinder back into the padlock. There, that's flat. This goes back in. Just an Allen wrench. Tighten it really good. Without breaking it. Alright, so that's... Old key. Nothing. Will not turn. Pull it out. The new key that I cut goes in easy. Done.